Good morning again ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here with a, yet another kit review. This one is a early birthday present from my uh, youngest daughter. Um, I've opened it before she comes in so I can do this kit review and then I'll put it back. <laughs> so hope she doesn't watch. So as you can see, it's I've never built an amusing hobby kit before. Uh, it's the Flak Panzer E100 88mm Flak Villing. 88 millimeter. It's a one of one of the E100 uh, fictional tanks that was on the drawing board. As you can see, the uh, large towers at the back. Obviously, this is uh, the end towards the end of the war in Berlin. But, uh, it looks a bit of a monster again, as do most of the E100s. So there's a nice, nice box artwork on there. Um, I think it's just got the same on the other side, yep it has, but the kit number is 35A016, obviously it's World War II and it's 31-35 scale. So on both ends are the same, and on here we have a small colour call out, as you can see it's a bit of a... At least the box, obviously that's just the box contains such and such and such, such workable link tracks. Nothing else on there. And on the other side, we have another couple of, couple of colour call outs. I quite fancy that one. Whenever I get round to it. And they're the same MIG colours again, but I say I don't usually use MIG, I use Tamir or Vallejo, so I'll have to find the nearest ones to that. As you can see, it's, it's another nice looking vehicle. Just a picture of some of these. Uh, I can say a pity, but just imagine if these things did come to fruition. Yeah, it's amazing technology for this time, for the, for the time in, in history. Right, so let's open the box. Let's see, I've just took the lid off, as you can see, everything is still in its uh, as it is. So I've just opened the box. Nothing else, nothing else at all. So we shall start as normal from the top. So we'll bring a bag of. Bring it. This is the one part of the links for the track, and as you can see, let me through the glare. Let's just get one out. Let's just get one. Out. Let me can see. And as you can see, we have the track link. These are obviously these. It's, it's there's two different track links, the one with the uh, guide horns, which this one has, and the other ones must be the flat ones. But the nice detail, yeah, there's only two connection points on each one, and... I can't see any... I'm going to focus. I can't really see if there's any... Where are we going? No, there isn't any sink marks. Oh, is that just one? I highlight very, very fine one on the other side. If it is, it'll just take a wisp from a, from a uh, sander. There again. All right, so that was uh, the first little thing. Keep that separate up there. The first brief. See, a lot of the chassis are all the same. They're all the uh, probably on the same. This is as trumpeters, I would have thought. So this has got a lovely texture on the actual, uh, these are the actual side skirts. It's got a nice, I don't know if it can quite pick it up, let me just drop this light down a little touch. Is that any better? That's actually worse isn't it? That's got a nice bit of texture on there. Let me just make it out. And then obviously we have the, uh, the rear of the hull. Nice detail again. So it's the first time I've ever had an amusing hobby kit. Basically, it's very similar layout and look to the uh, the trumpeter one with the uh, suspension layout and the way it's been created. Nice small details again. Looks nice. No flash. No sync marks that I can see, apart from 
where you're not going to see them. So that's the first, the first sprue. So there's not a great deal of part in these kits, obviously with uh, being a sort of a proto oh, well, tank that never actually got built. Maybe I think the chassis got built, but I think that's as far as they got. I think I may be wrong, but I think they did. Right, so we have two screws the same here, and these are all the uh, running gear. I have to say, very nice indeed. Very nice. That's the uh, wheels. Definitely on par with Trumpeter on this, definitely. Got the small ones at the top, the uh, lifting eyes, and one thing and another. That's part of the suspension, and then we have a part of the uh, exhaust, and then part of the covers again for the uh, engine deck, and I don't know what that one. That's part of the. Uh, ah, there we go. Looking at the wrong way around. So we have the sprocket, which is nicely detailed again. Nice, nice uh, raised bolt heads, and on the rear we have. Yeah, for the idler, sorry, the uh, return, yeah, the idler wheel. Nice detail on that again. As you can see, they're nicely, nicely, really nicely detailed. And obviously, suspension arms, the shackles are quite enormous, as you would have thought with this vehicle. Yeah, that's the inside of the uh, sprocket, all the small bits and bobs, part of the exhaust there. It's a slide molded exhaust, so it's quite nice. It's got a nice, nice touch like that. Nice detailing. And we have the rest of the tracks. I shall just get our oh, tracks and suspension. Tracks and suspension, which is different. And there's one, two, three, four, five screws the same there. So we have these are parts of the suspension, and the suspension springs, which are nice again. Really, really nice. Wow. They're actually clear, they're not molded in one plastic, they're actually springs. They're going to be delicate to take out, but wow. Never seen that before. As you can see, the hollow. That is superb. The one's a bit bent. I'll have to be careful with one or two of those. Let's we'll come off the sprue. Sprue gate. And then we have the, yeah, like I said, the tracks with the uh, non guide hard ones. Now these, that's the front, and that's the inside. And no, no injection marks. Fantastic. I only see there's only four points on this one to take off, so that's not too bad. But I can't go over those springs. That's really amazing. Now well, they've got that like that. I'll have to be very careful with them, but uh, absolutely superb. Right, so that's down there as well. And we have another small sprue here with it looks like pioneer tools, yeah it is, and other bits and bobs, the shackle. All really nicely moulded, really are nicely moulded. Axe, speed, you know, crank handle, track track tensioner things, guide arms, guide arms, um for the tow tow rope, for the tow cable, even the jack, bolt cutters, resume their cleaning rods, fire extinguisher, which is nicely detailed again. All nicely detailed. And the actual jack block has a wood texture. 
as well as you've got it on the sides. Just a pity it isn't on the sides, but we can soon we can soon sort that. Quite nice. Let's uh, make a bit of a wood texture on the inside of the, on the sides of the box. Yep, nice and nice, very nice. So. In there. Right, the same again with the, as the other holes, they're very much, well in fact they're all the same, but obviously this is a different company, but to me they look exactly like the trumpeter, same sort of detail level, again nice weld seam all the way around there, so the engine deck which is all nicely moulded again, inside that's where the uh, side skirts what do you want to call them? Onto the uh, hull. Nice well details again on the sides there. And actually on the, uh, the holders for the sides, because you can see the weld seam. Very nice indeed. Very nice. Very nice. So, that's it. Put that back in there as well. And then on the air, the lower deck again, for the engine at the bottom of the hull, the usual sort of fare at the bottom. We have uh, you know, the engine hatches, sorry, engine hatches, escape hatches, and other bits and bobs. And there again, it's pretty plain on the side because all the bits are add onto there. A slight texture again on this, on the uh, hull, hull, very slightly, we just can't quite see it. Very faint, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, nicely done. Nicely done. And then we have the turret, which is an interesting shape to say the least. Nicely detailed again with the welding and the uh, Metal is where it's been cut. Nice detail again on the cuts. Slight, slight texture, not a great deal again. But, uh, it's nicely detailed again at the back. More pieces to go in. Obviously, there's the uh, cut steel effect again on the uh, on the rear. So you pick that up. There we go. So it's an unusual sort of shape turret. Not the uh, usual sort of thing. Obviously, being a flat gun, it's going to be slightly different shape, isn't it? But I do like the shape of that very much indeed. Should be an interesting build. And then we have one more large sprue, which contains the gun mantlet, the gun cupola, and the lower, the lower turret ring. Yep, so it's all nicely detailed and the, uh, the flat guns are slide moulded as you can see, which is fantastic. So there's not much there to get the seam out of anything else, only got three contact points, two on one, yeah. So that should be easy to get out there. Nice detail again. So gun mantlet, obviously that goes inside of the gun mantlet for the uh, things to be attached. Commander's cupola, which is nicely detailed, slight texture on there again, can you see that? That's more like oh, the texture I was on about, you can see that better now. A couple of hatches, a bit of detail inside and outside, texture again on that. Not so much on the other one. Nice. Got a nice detail on this kit. And all these parts are obviously part of the turret. So I'm quite impressed with the uh, slide moulding guns and the springs especially. They were really nice. Be interesting. It's interesting to see how I get them springs off and how they actually work. It's going to be very, very difficult to get off. But 
not impossible. And then we have the decals, which I won't get out of the pouch, just uh, a couple of markings. And I'm going to say, I've never used them using hobbies decals before, because obviously I've never used a kit before, but just the usual box standard German crosses. But I do have a stencil, as you know, and I've got another stencil coming, so I think by the, when I've made this, I think I'll probably use the stencil. We'll see. We shall see. And then we have one little thread of PE, which is very thin, but nice. It's nicely, nicely, uh, all the engine hatches. No point getting that out of the bag. Just the usual fare for them. But nice again, nicely detailed. And then we have the destructions and a colour call out, which is nice. And we have the uh, Paint markings, obviously there's no there's no battalion or anything like that because I didn't get this far. Yeah, most of these paints I can get into me, yeah, but the first one colour call out which is really nice. That's quite nice, fairly easy to do. No problem with that one. A bit more complicated with there we go. With that one looks quite nice, I don't know, I might be. Hmm, don't know. I don't know, I'll have to have a look at that. But, uh, yeah, I could possibly do that one. And then we have a glare a second. What was that one? Uh, the first one, the second one, and the third, this one. Nice. And is there another one as well? And yeah, there's another one. So we'll call out for four vehicles. The simplest one I would think with the uh, red oxide red as it came out the uh, the factory I think it's time to uh, paint it and same with the turret uh, the flat guns themselves we got that sort of steel look black steel yeah I, I do like it when you get the kits with the uh, full of call outs like that makes it a lot lot easier and obviously you got the side views of both sides the uh, overhead view and the uh, rear and front so we have the destructions, which is quite nice in the book form. Not glossy, but still nice artwork on the front. It's got the usual fare on the front about the kit itself. We know what not to do and what to do. And then we have the uh, sprue map. And as you can see, all the parts are being used. Yep, there's nothing on there that won't be used. And obviously we start off again with the... Starting off the lower hole with the suspension, and the springs are on the second. Um, as you can see, they're going through here, hollow. So it'll be interesting. I'm really looking forward to get trying them eventually. So I have a lot more things to do first. But, uh, a few buddy builds. One I'm on with with John Moore, the uh, KV122, and then I have the Pan the Meng Panther with Matt. Starting off with this week coming up. And then I have a King Tag, Men King Tag with Paul and Jack. So I've got a few buddy builds going at the moment, so I don't know when I'll get round to these. But the same again, it's just the suspension arms and yeah, and the wheels, but I've never had the wheels at that point. And then again, we have the idle wheel and the sprocket, and then the rear of the tank. I'll build all the wheels up at that point, but I certainly won't be putting them on the, uh, the lower hull at that point. And then we'll obviously we're starting on the uh, upper hull. Putting the PE on, the engine covers, little bits and pieces, division blocks and things like that, and then you start about putting the tracks. As you say about the tracks, you give us how many each side. No, oh yeah, 102 tracks links for each side. So as you can see, it's a quite a large track count, but very straightforward. Well, people don't like the individual tracks, I find it quite therapeutic. But I'm a bit like that. A bit, uh, I don't know, just once you get into a rhythm and do it, you can actually start uh, taking them all off the sprues and then cleaning them off as you're watching TV or something. Or, you know, there we are putting the uh, shackles on and that in the front and rear. Bits and bobs, you see, there's a warning, something on there. And I'm putting the shite skirts on again, but I say I probably won't be putting them on at that point. I'll probably maybe lose a couple, I don't know yet, because I like to look at the big chunky tear. The tracks seems to be hidden too much. And then we're starting with the uh, 
the main turret fairly straightforward again engine hatches rear doors all the sub plots obviously the sub sub build which is then added to the turret the commander's cupola has got the uh, was there a glass piece in there you can see any uh, clear plastic Plastic then. D2. Ah, there, they're not clear plastic, just normal plastic. I thought I missed out on something there, not clear plastic, just the uh, thought they were. But as you see, at least for the inside, so you're really not going to see them that much. And then we're starting to attach the commander's cupola uh, and then a few of the bits and bobs onto it. So it's a fairly straightforward build, nothing over complicated. Nicely, nicely laid out um, instructions. And then we're starting with the, uh, the turret, the, the inside of a turret for the guns to go onto, hatches again. Matter for the front and the side, so this is going on obviously for the adjustment for the flat guns, and then we start to build up the flat guns, which are fairly straightforward, nothing too difficult in that. And then we attach the lower hull to the hook hull, and that's as far as the build is concerned. Is that so? It's a fairly straightforward kit, but nice, very nice indeed. That's another one I'm looking forward to now. So I've nearly got all the E1s, I think. Probably one or two which I haven't got, but and I think I've got enough now to, to be getting on with. So, um, so that's about it, I think. So thank you very much for taking your time, time out of your day to watch this uh, small kit review of an interesting subject. Well, I think it is. I like these uh, paper panzers and the, all the E100s, 100s. I think basically somebody was telling me that I or an alternative to the mouse. I wouldn't take it as gospel, but I've just maybe read that somewhere and it stuck in my mind. So, thank you very much for watching, and thank you all my subscribers for taking the, the time to look and watch. And hopefully, you like still like doing, still like what I do. So, I think this is Greg signing off, and we'll catch you soon.